So you mentioned President Obama, you mentioned Chancellor Merkel, and I said to you that they are both quite angry at a, the authoritarian uh, tone that you and your government is increasingly taken. Right now, you have a situation where you have called in the German ambassador because of a satire that was on the internet in Germany, m mocking you and criticizing you. Why do you care? Why is it so important for you to make a big deal about this? And doesn't it show that you have a very thin skin and that actually by making a big deal about this, people know about it, whereas people may not have known about it if you hadn't bothered with it at all? Well, I must put it in very frank terms. We shouldn't confuse criticism with insult and defamation. I am, and my people are, open to criticism. I am an open politician and I'm an open leader. With the participation of 85% and with the 52% of all the votes, I was elected the president for the first time in Turkey. Why? Because as a prime minister, I used to work a lot in order to help flourish democracy, help establish a better and a more prosperous infrastructure along with superstructure. And uh, the way Turkey stands in economic terms is quite obvious and appreciated by the Turkish people. So long as you love the people sincerely and deeply, people will love you. And this is something that I've observed in the aftermath of the presidential elections in Turkey. So why do you care about this satire? Hershey. Satire, whether it be satire or not, everything has to have boundaries. While you are coming up with some sort of a satire, a simple caricature, a simple sketch, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you draw up a caricature and put the subject into a shape that they're not supposed to be in, and if you associate that subject with the things you're not supposed to, then, of course, you can't expect that to be acceptable. We have laws in place, and laws allow you to have freedom to the extent defined by law. And, of course, it's my natural right to seek out for my own rights. Through my lawyers and through my solicitors, I can do this. Let me give you an example. If through satire, Daesh would be supported, would you accept this? Yeah, but those are two different things. Yet you say they are two different things. But satire with the president of a country in its core results in defamation and insults, something totally different. You cannot claim Tayyip Erdogan to be a terrorist. And if somebody's going to claim a democratic president of any country a terrorist, I will seek out for my rights through legal means. This is what I did. If I don't do that, I will have acted disrespectfully to the 52% of the votes of my people that I had received. So that's one instance of a bigger picture because um, Europe is also, and, and your own people, your own free press, are very, very concerned about what's happening under your, under your government. So many people are being fired from their jobs, put into jail, and are on trial. And you know there are two key people on trial right now uh, from the newspaper that uh, is under threat from, from the government and from the legal process. And Europeans are going to the trial to observe the trial. That is kind of normal. The EU does that all over the world. And you're really angry about it. Um, again, I'm a member of the press. I'm also a UNESCO ambassador for freedom of expression. And I, I don't understand why somebody who's as secure as you are and who has such a, a record when you were prime minister of democratizing Turkey, why you have gone to war with the press in your country. What, what's the point of it? Well, I'm not at war with press. We have to define what war against press stands for in your point of view and in my point of view. Well, getting having them fired, going to jail, putting them on trial, closing down newspapers, for instance. Um, espionage, do you think it is a freedom of expression or freedom of press? Mr. President, every time we have this conversation, they, they, get, they get turned into spies and terrorists. You know, please answer this to me. Nobody else says that. Is espionage part of freedom of press? Well, I mean, of course not, but but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about press, independent press, in your democracy. 
I guess the way I can say it is this. The EU has said freedom of expression is a non-negotiable condition for joining the EU as, as you want to do. And you're in all these, all these talks with the EU. Are you going to allow your press to be free? Well, my country has laws in place. If a member of the press or an executive of a newspaper engaging in espionage, disclosing a country's secrets to the rest of the world, and if this conduct becomes a part of a litigation, a litigation will result in a verdict. Wherever you go around the world, this will be the case. Engaging in actions which are not allowed by law should have certain prices to pay. And that price will not be paid by the president of any given country. And regardless of where you're at around the world, there are very similar laws in place. There are many uh, similar litigations going on. That's why in Turkey, not myself, nor my government, we have never done anything to stop freedom of expression or freedom of press. On the contrary, the press in Turkey had been very critical of me and my government attacking me very seriously. And regardless of those attacks, we had been very patient in the way we responded to those attacks. This used to be the case when I was the prime minister, and this is still the case as a president. I guess finally, are you not concerned that your European partners, your American partners, your journalists in Turkey are very concerned that these are politically motivated accusations and charges. Politically motivated. Well, I think you need to step outside the US. If you're looking from the point of view of the United States, you're looking from the United States on to whatever is going on in the rest of the world, you will be mistaken. If there are problems about this issue, we always invite the parties to come to Turkey and talk about these issues with the Minister of Justice and with my people. And we can always show you how many people have been incarcerated in Turkey because of their identities as uh, media members. You say you invite people to, 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 to see for themselves. So you won't mind if EU representatives come to the trial because they've been criticized. I mean, people are calling it the Crusader in invasion into the court process. <laughs> It's okay for the uh, journalists to come as observers to the trials. It's different to have the consul generals attending tribunals collectively, supportive of people who are allegedly engaged in espionage will never be tolerated. Having snapshots with those people will not be accepted by the judiciary nor by the people. As this was not accepted, the vast majority of the Turkish people and the vast majority of the political movements in Turkey, whether it be the party in power, whether it be the opposition, we saw reactions when it comes to this direct intervention in judiciary by the council generals and the ambassador's attendance. I just want you to know that. So much that you have in common with Europe and so many uh, issues like the refugees and terrorism that you have to fight together and so many things that still keep you apart. We will continue to monitor Turkey and we thank you very much indeed, Mr. President, for joining us. And I would like to thank you, but about the EU, I must say that we still haven't received what we were expecting. The year 1963, and now it's the year 2016, ever since, 53 years passed by, and in a period of 53 years, although we are one of the first applicants to the EU membership, we're still uh, lingering at the doorstep. The latecomers have already been a part of the EU as member states. We are still being kept busy with irrelevant obstacles, but we are very patient, we are very determined, and I hope and pray that the outcome will be very positive. And I would like to thank you for this opportunity and for this broadcast, and I would like to extend my uh, best regards to the people of the United States on your behalf or through your channel. Thank you.